All right, so we've been working on this cutter. I've got a pretty good chunk of land I need to go bail up. Um, and it's not, probably not ready for that. So it has not been a fun couple of days. Let me just say it that way. I've been so busy I have not been able to videotape a whole lot. I've just got a lot of work to do and it really interrupts the videoing. But anyways, here's what's going on. I got out and started cutting hay and once I got out there cutting it, everything was going smoothly. I'm having problems with the cutter, obviously. And it's an old, it's an old cutter and that's what you end up with with old equipment sometimes. So what it happened is I'm hitting holes. Cows have been in this field, and so there's quite a few holes in the field. And then on top of that, I'm finding a few areas where the hogs have gotten in there uh, beforehand, and you can't see it because the grass has covered it up, and then bam, all of a sudden you hit a hole. And so it causes problems. So you end up breaking rock guards, breaking blades, and so forth and so on, uh, ant beds, uh, this is just all part of it. There are some days you just want to throw in the towel and say, I've had enough. But that's not the way it works. You have to keep going. And then that's the reality of it. But now, I have a sickle bar uh, bushing that went out and it broke the bolt that goes to that sickle bar. So we got to fix that. I have a couple of blades I need to take a look at and see if I can get those fixed. Then we're going to get back out in the field and get this cutter going again. Uh, I had to call in some reinforcements yesterday. I called in my brother to bail up a little bit of hay that we had on the ground because I had problems uh, not only with the cutter, but I went out there to try to bail that up and <laughs> wouldn't you know it, uh, had a bearing go out on the baler and that took over most of the day getting the, uh, getting the bearing out of that cutter and then getting a new bearing and getting a new bearing in the cutter. But everything's off the ground at the moment. It didn't make a lot of hay. We're only talking about 11 bells and I've already had problems. And now we're gonna to try to get this cutter going. Here we go again, working on this cutter. Well, let me show you what's going on. So if you look right here, this is your sickle bar bushing and it looks like it's been wearing for a while because you can see this is oblong. And then this is where your bolt goes through. Now normally this takes a four inch, half inch, this takes a half inch bolt, four inches long, and normally fine thread, but I couldn't find a fine thread. So I talked to our hay guys here that sell hay equipment, and they said it'd be fine if I use a, a uh, go ahead and use a coarse thread bolt. And so that's what we're gonna do, because I can't find the other. So we're gonna bust, we're gonna knock this out, hopefully get a new bolt in. Before I do that though, I'm gonna see if I can move this this bar around. It's got a lot of hay hung up in the in it right now. You know what? I think all the blades are on it, and they all look fairly good. There's a broken one right in there. You can't hardly see it. But believe it or not, I think all the blades look pretty good. I don't see any bent. I don't see any bent rock guards. Everything looks pretty good. I'm also having problems with the with the height on it. So I may have too much pressure on the springs because I've been told, again, this is by our equipment company here in, in our area that works on hay equipment. It's what they do. And I cannot get the float pressures correct. So I tighten the springs up more and so forth, but it didn't really help. I don't know what the deal was. Matter of fact, it seemed like it made it worse. And so I talked to the hay guys and they said, yes, you can get the springs too tight and therefore the float doesn't work like it's supposed to. And it's not, it's not floating like it should. So we got problems there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen the springs up here a little while after I fix the sickle bar and just try it again. We're going to go back to where we were <laughs> always starting over. Yep. I'm really getting tired. All right, I got that loose. Well, okay. Yeah, 
Yes, I know. <clears throat> Grass is all hung up in it. Probably if I take a match to it and clean it out, that would work. I'm so close. I am like right there. There it is. There it is. Bushing's out. You can see if you look at it real close, you see it's oblong. It's not in very good shape. I would say that would be uh, almost usable if it had all the center parts and was new this would be a usable bushing but it's not anymore this is what the new bushing looks like you can see it's got the center bushing and it also has this outer ring of bushing that's all missing on this one so that's what i have to replace and why i have to replace it this is just no good so check your bushings if you have one of these you want to keep the bushings in pretty good shape now use a old screwdriver or punt a chisel or something to open this up just a little bit you don't want to go crazy on opening this <clears throat> and then that way you can easier drive this bushing down in there i usually hit the tap the edges of it i don't tap the whole thing trying to get it to tap in and that's what it's doing right now it's tapping in there we go put your bolt back in and tighten it up All right, so you guys have seen us adjust these springs before. The springs are designed to help take pressure off of the header so that it floats more in the pasture. Well, one of the problems that I'm having is it's digging in uh, in some cases. Now, I talked to our guy that does a lot of haybine work, and he says you can get these too tight, which I did not know that. And I may be too tight, and I'm going to take the springs back down to where they were because it was actually cutting okay right there. I thought I could just pull a little more pressure off those heads, off that head up there. And apparently I didn't. So we're gonna pull this right back down to where it was so that I can uh, just start over from the same spot I was in before. I tighten this one up quite a bit. This one was about here. So I'm way too tight, probably. All right, so yeah, my, my mistake. It's pretty close. So here's a cool little idea if you don't, you know, you have a, a cutter or something and you need to keep blades and other things. And this is, this is just an ammo box, ammo box came from a uh, Harbor Freight and what I'm going to do with it is I'm going to mount it right there and then I'm going to put all the blades and other stuff inside of it have the lid where it closes this way so if I leave it open it falls or the wind will blow it I don't know just what does it matter so I'm going to go ahead and do that what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill four holes in the bottom of it four holes into this put some bolts in it and call it a day well actually I'm going to go cut hay I think I don't think it's supposed to do that. There we go. 
So all I did is drill the four holes in the bottom of it, flip it over, and when you put my hinge on the front side, because I want to, and uh, I've already checked below here. Sure, there's nothing in the way. Everything is, is in good shape here. I'm gonna move it back just a little bit. I'll put it right there. I'm gonna line it up real nice and neat so it doesn't get in the way of anything, okay? And it's easy to take off if I have to. I'm gonna mark my holes. There's one. Move just a hair on me. Four. As always, I left my wrench inside. So this is now just mounted on here. It's waterproof, it's not going anywhere. Uh, I can use the cutter with it on here and it's not gonna bother it. I did put some lock washers under it. Anything, I should probably should use some lock nuts. I don't have any. But if we had some lock nuts, we would lock nut this thing on, but we didn't do that. So we're gonna leave it like this now and I'm getting ready to go out and cut hay, except I don't have any diesel. I don't have a diesel transfer tank either. I would love to have a diesel transfer tank, but I don't even know which what to buy on a diesel transfer tank because I don't want one that's permanently mounted in the back of my truck. I wanna be able to remove it. I don't really want one that's over hundred gallons because number one, I can't afford that much fuel. I've also gone through and fixed several of these tines that were, were they had no holders on them. Now all the tines are here, which is, I'm thankful for that. Uh, the, this needs bushings in it, but all the tines are here. Uh, this is the tine keeper or whatever you're supposed to use. This is the one off of a old 1209 John Deere that I have that is not any good anymore. It actually needs to go to the scrap yard, but in, before I do that, I'm using, I'm using some of the pieces and parts on, on it to see if anything fits this cutter. And these work fine, this is working. So we've mixed and matched some of the parts off of the John Deere. So it, when, by doing that now, I've kind of, you know, I got a hybrid cutter over here. So I have to stop everything I'm doing. I gotta go to town. I gotta get diesel in several tanks, bring that back, put it in the tractor, then I can go cut hay. Why can't things just be easy? Shh, don't tell nobody. I'm using a red can to put diesel in the tractor. So we're back out in the field. Now look, today I had spent about most of the day working on this cutter. Um, I had a lot of problems with the cutter. Uh, you know, it was breaking bolts. And I showed you some pictures of that and what we were going to do to it. So here's what I ended up doing. I, we didn't get a lot of that this on the film but I'll just tell you what happened. Went ahead and replaced several rock guards, almost all the blades. There was a couple of blades that were pretty good shape. Did not redo all those. I am actually going very slow uh, in this field to right now. It is, it is really rough. And I think that might be what's causing some of my problems. I'm lifting a little bit. I, I don't know what else to do. We're gonna see if we can get this place uh, cut without breaking any more rock guards or any blades or, or making a mess out of it. Um, it is a it is a rough field though and you can see just by I don't know if you can tell by the video or not but you know I'm I'm definitely using the air ride seat So we got the cutter back together. We went out and cut some hay with it. I didn't get no video of that, but we'll get some video here pretty soon because I still got a lot to cut. But I got a little bit cut with it. It's got a couple of small issues that I need to continue to repair. That's what I'm doing is I'm trying to fix it back up so it runs really well and it's actually you know dependable when I get out in the field with it. But I appreciate everybody. Until next time though, thanks.